Thank you, Jean, for having me at the DevOps Enterprise Summit. This conference, along with many of your reports and books, have given me and my colleagues so much inspiration. So when you asked me to join as a speaker, I of course just couldn't say no. Hi, I'm Anders Lundsgård from 1337, the Stockholm office. I am a cloud solutions architect with a real passion for DevOps. And I'm here to share my story about the DevOps journey in an enterprise. And that enterprise is Scania, an engine, bus and heavyweight truck manufacturer. My passion in my working life is to enable developers to work much more efficient than I've ever been made myself. I learn developers how to operate their code in cloud environments. And I also try, which has shown to be a little bit more complicated, operations guys how to code. Since I've been involved in the cloud adoption at Scania for six to seven years, I see cloud as an enabler, a technical enabler for DevOps. A disclaimer before I continue, this is not a way for me to define DevOps. I will share the story that me and hundreds of other colleagues at Scania Connected Services have made during a 10 year journey to be work more efficient with how we produce and put software in the hands of the end users. Then we have had DevOps as a buzzword to Google about, to have some opinions about, and I think it's really good. We have these good books like Phoenix Project and the DevOps Handbook, but we do not have a single page like, for example, the Agile Manifest. But that's, the, that's fine. I think it's good that everyone can have their own opinions, and I guess that's the reason for we having these kind of conferences. If we step back in time, my very first job were on a startup. I would own the guide at a company of two that know how to write some code. So I wrote the code, I wrote the tests, I made some kind of deployment pipeline to push out the code into the web server. And I'd also put on some key metrics so I could see that my end users could get some web traffic at least. I were the guy that the end user called when something went wrong. DevOps was not coined back then, but it was a kind of a DevOps situation because I worked with the code and I ensured that the end user could use that code. 2008, I decided to move to an enterprise of Scania and I was faced with a total new situation for me as a developer. When I started the first week, I got to explain to me that the code you're writing right now ain't gonna to be de deployed into production until the next year. Nine months after I wrote the code, that would go live into production. And I thought that maybe this is how it works in large enterprises. But during the years, I've come to understanding that it does not have to be that situation. And I also understand that this tug of war we see on the screen is between developers with one kind of key metrics and another one for operations. And it's not technical challenge. Of course, there are technical challenges, but the most of the challenges have absolutely been cultural. And I will try to focus on those in this talk. Here's a picture taken from a very big moment. It was the very last manual deployment production back in 2015. It was me and about 10 other engineers that went into the office on a Saturday morning to do the release. And this was a very, I would say, a non-DevOps situation for many reasons. One we can see at the left, we had a release plan. A release plan stating to us what we should do to have a successful release that Saturday morning. At the top of the release plan, it states that we should call the network guy to bring out the servers from the load balancer and turn on the maintenance page. Because it was the fact that we had downtime for the end user while we were doing the release. And that was the reason we went in early on a Saturday morning. 
Then on these screens, we have four or actually six web servers that me and the other colleagues moved some files to put live in production with a new version of the code. Behind me, we had the DBA that at some point in the release plan got the responsibility to, to do the schema changes in the database. In the middle, we have a small post-it. And on this post-it, it was the phone number of the engineering manager. Because when things went wrong, which sadly happened sometimes, we need to escalate it and call in some developers that could help us troubleshoot and find the issue. The Red Bulls to the right, they might just be a symbol for that this was a big event. We need to go in on a Saturday morning and we did it only once a month. And it was a stressful situation. So we had this set up that I probably many have seen a wall between the development and operations department. And it was actually not one office space at Scania. I were in one building, operations guys, I had to go 20 minutes to another department to meet these guys. And we from development, we were need to have more features out in a more rapid quickly. And operations guys, they needed to keep up the stability. And these two goals have shown to be very often in conflict with each other. So the guy at the top of the wall here was me. Sometimes actually finger pointing to the operations guys because they were the bottleneck in our release improvement process. <laughs> 